Welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Ravi Khori Sector, Senior Fellow, Dr. V. S. Vakankar Archaeological Research Institute, Bhopal. In the subject of Indian culture and paper 2 on pre and proto historic cultures of India, in this presentation, we will be focusing our attention on obtaining an outline of Neolithic cultures of Northern, Northwestern, and Eastern India. As we can see on this map, the physiographic subdivisions of northern India can be identified in the form of Himalayan plateau, the sub-Himalayan Siwalik hill ranges. Further southwards of the sub-Himalayan hill, hill ranges, we have the, the great uh, alluvial plains of Indus and Ganga valleys. Further south of the Indo-Ganga plains is the Vindian plateau. But here we are focusing our attention on the mountain and sub-mountain as well as the alluvial plains uh, archaeological uh, evidence relating to the emergence of Neolithic way of life. The Himalayas extend from northeast towards northwest and that forms the great Himalayan arc. To the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent, we have the Baluchistan uh, Hindu Kush mountain ranges separating India from Southwest Asia. While the Himalayas separate India from Northern Asia, the Burma mountains, which are also known as Arakan Yoma mountains, separate Eastern India from Eastern Asia. This was a major barrier, natural physiographic barrier, which did not permit frequent um, migrations of people from Northern Asia as well as Eastern Asia. Whereas in the Northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent, there are a couple of passes, the most famous ones being the Khyber Pass and the Bolan Pass. In these two regions, we have uh, been able to document evidence for the presence of human settlements dating from the lower Paleolithic time onwards. But these passes also have played a very important role in the rise of uh, agricultural way of life um, and also the archaeological sites in the region have given clear evidence of the transition from hunting gathering to uh, sedentary agricultural way of life. On this map, we see mention of several site names, which are some of the best known mountainous Neolithic sites that have been excavated by archaeologists in the recent past. As a result of excavations at these sites, we do have clear account of the emergence of agricultural way of life in the mountain, intramountain and intramountain valleys. Amongst the sites mentioned here, the site of Mehergar on the river Bolan in, on the Kachi plain of uh, Pakistan is one of the most important sites for the reconstruction of emergence of agricultural way of life in the Indian subcontinent. The site of Mehergar lies on the uh, Indo-Iranian borderlands uh, along the Bolan Pass and that has facilitated communication and movement of peoples across this particular mountainous region between Southwest Asia and mainland India. This is also a critical geographical area wherein the processes of uh, transition from hunting gathering way of life to agricultural way of life was governed by the introduction of uh, basic cereal food crops from Southwest Asia into the Indian subcontinent as well as domestication of local varieties of animals, particularly cattle, sheep and goat. For the northwards along the Baluchistan mountain ranges in the Swat Valley, we also have a couple of sites contemporary with the Mehergar uh, Neolithic early phases. This northwestern mountain range has played a very critical role in the emergence of uh, uh, systematic uh, agricultural way of life, which was characterized by combination of plant cultivation as well as domestication of animals such as cattle, sheep and goat. The site of Mehergar is located on the Kachi plain on the banks of the river Bolan. This is the typical landscape associated with the mountain ranges. In the foothill areas, the vast Kachi plain has been generated by a network of streams originating in the Baluchistan mountain ranges. This is here in the 1970s, the French archaeological mission to Pakistan chanced upon an important discovery in the form of Mehergar Neolithic site. As of today, this happens to be the oldest Neolithic site known from any part of the Indian subcontinent. 
In the context of Northwestern Indian Neolithic culture, two important sites uh, are under consideration for our understanding of the Neolithic culture in that region. Mehergar and Kiligul Muhammad in Balochistan, Gufkral and Burjahom in the Kashmir Valley, Sarai Khola in the Potwar Plateau, and Ghaligai, Labnor, and Kalako Dere in the Swath Valley. These sites together have contributed to reconstructing the emergence of Neolithic way of life from about 9,000 years ago onwards. At Meherkar, uh, the site extent of the Neolithic site is estimated to be around 200 hectares. A 9 meter thick cultural deposit uh, which has, has, has been excavated and within this uh, deposit, seven periods of occupation have been identified ranging in time from pre-pottery Neolithic to um, dating back to about 8000 uh, BC to 3rd millennium BC. That was the time when the urbanization processes began to take shape in the greater Indus Valley. The pre-pottery Neolithic is characterized by small multi-roomed brick rectangular houses. These bricks were handmade. There, were, there is evidence of storage pits indicating uh, agriculture and um, a surplus being produced for communal purposes and uh, uh, there is clear evidence of uh, a hunting continuing along with the um, agriculture as well as domestication of goats. By about 6000 BC, domestication of sheep, cattle and goat becomes a mainstay of their economy along with cultivation of barley uh, and wheat as well in an area of about 10 hectares. The settlement also reveal, reveals storage facilities in the form of large storage pits. By 5000 BC, southern cluster of houses with private courtyards, domestic installations and storage facilities for storing wheat and barley, uh, including iron corn and emmer wheat, uh, drum and bread wheat, uh, use of uh, gigifus fruit, grapes and date palm besides cotton are um, known from this particular time period at Mehergad. This slide uh, presents some of the earliest uh, brick houses that were built during the Neolithic period and uh, as mentioned earlier these houses were both single roomed and multi roomed houses. This is a six roomed house that was excavated at Mehergar. General view of the site excavated area where you have series of structures uh, representing domestic architecture and the earliest brick architecture known anywhere in the Indian subcontinent. These are some of the typical polished stone axes recovered from excavations at Mehergar from the earliest levels uh, of Neolithic occupation here. There is a clear evidence of uh, the use of microliths as composite tools and these two examples of hafted tools um, are known from Neolithic Mehergar. From uh, Baluchistan region in northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent to further northeast of this region, we enter into the Kashmir Valley. This is an intermountain basin. Um, it's a boat-shaped boat valley, which is filled up with the sediments known as Karavas. On the plateau, on the plateau surfaces of the Karavas, we have series of Neolithic sites uh, reported from the last uh, uh, 50 years or so. The earliest site to be excavated in the Kashmir Valley was Burjahom, followed by Gufkral and Semtan. At Gufkral, for the first time, uh, pre-pottery Neolithic levels have been identified. Whereas at Burjahom, when it was excavated, the although there are although there were suspected layers of pre-pottery Neolithic, uh, in the in the in the context of the time when the site was excavated, the presence of pre-pottery Neolithic levels were not. Um, identified. But however, the excavations of Gufkral, which were conducted in the late 80s, have thrown adequate life, uh, adequate light on the emergence of Neolithic culture in the Kashmir Valley. Gufkral, the aceramic levels are followed by ceramic Neolithic levels. And then, series of uh, uh, archaeobotanical investigations that were carried out here. Uh, including uh, the study of animal remains recovered from excavations have given us clear picture of the fact that this agricultural way of life was characterized by a, a combination of domestication of, of plant foods as well as domestication of animals.
The domesticated animals included sheep, goat, uh, cattle, and some of the hunted animals included wolf, uh, bear, etc. In addition to this, cereal farming was most common and the cereals in included wheat, barley, lentils and pea. Stock raising was an important aspect of their domestic economy. At Burjahom, Neolithic has been dated from about 2800 BCE to 2000 BCE. This is phase 1 which has revealed the existence of pit dwellings in the early phases. They were all Sub followed by rectangular mud brick houses in the later levels. The photograph shows the general um, landscape of uh, the site of uh, Burjahom as well as the um, graphics uh, reveal the excavated trench um, revealing the strata, cultural strata as well as at the base the evidence for pit dwelling. Burjahom period 2, burials of both adults and infants were, or, were excavated. One adult skull had a four finished uh, and three unfinished holes from trepanning. Here, in addition to the features just mentioned, there is evidence of uh, domestication of dog and uh, also uh, a burial practice which uh, uh, included uh, burials for the dog as well as sometimes the dogs were also buried along with the uh, master. Burjahom excavations have also given good evidence of uh, bone tools that were um, uh, in use during the Neolithic time and these categories are shown in this uh, slide and barbed points are also uh, unique to this particular collection indicates the continuity of hunting practices amongst them. The polished stone axes are comparable to the Neolithic stone axes found elsewhere in the Indian subcontinent. Simple grey coloured pottery, handmade pottery was also common in the Neolithic Burjahom. At Burjahom, uh, during the uh, later phases of the Neolithic, it has been observed that pottery was handmade and, uh, um, and uh, had certain incised designs and also the outer surface was burnished. These are some of the examples of pottery types recovered from Burjahom period 2. On the surface of the pottery, some of the exotic animal forms were also painted, indicating links with the Indus uh, Valley culture, which was contemporary to the early Neolithic phase at Burjahom. With respect to Swath Valley sites, the Swath Valley is situated to the southwest of uh, Kashmir Valley. Uh, along the mountain ranges in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. The site of Kalako, Dere and Lebnar are important sites known from the Swath Valley. These sites were known much earlier than the site of Mar Mehergar. Small scale excavations have been carried at these sites. Lebnar Neolithic levels have been dated to 1800 to 1500 BCE and also indicates the continuity of Neolithic tradition here. Pit dwellings are common like in the Kashmir Valley. They were all covered with wattle and daub plaster structures. Pit storage areas with evidence for two types of barley, wheat, rice, lentils, peas and grape have been uh, documented from excavations of these pits in the sites mentioned earlier. These are also important sites uh, in the context of understanding the significance of pit dwellings. Whether they were truly pit dwellings or they were storage pits is uh, an issue that is being debated among archaeologists. While some archaeologists insist that there were pit dwellings because the environment necessitated uh, dwellings and the subterranean context. There are some scholars who think that they were not pit dwellings themselves but they were also storage uh, facility uh, for storing some of the grains mentioned here and indicating both storage as well as cultivation of these uh, varieties of cereals and pulses. Pottery of the Neolithic in this particular region is characterized by handmade uh, pottery with basket impressed bases and also with fine high burnished pedestal cups and bowls are very common. Terracotta objects, bone points and needles etc. have been documented from excavations at these sites. Bone Terracotta objects also include human forms. 
bone points are curved, bone hairpin, etc., are interesting. Find from here. Carved bone hairpins from the tomb of uh, Lavrel. Uh, this this area are comparable to those found in Eastern Asia, particularly China. As we move eastwards along the Himalayas, we enter into the northeastern humid landforms, uh, an environment which is all which is densely vegetated and also uh, a region which is characterized by characterized by higher rainfall as compared to other stretch of the mountain region along the northern and northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. This is the region which is strongly influenced by the southwest monsoon, whereas those areas of Balochistan and Kashmir Valley are covered by the winter rains. The region was, uh, was subject to exploration for a long time, but unfortunately the number of sites reported are very, very few. And the sites that are known uh, from this region are only surface collections. Explorations by European scholars like John Lubbock, Goodwin Austin, J. N. Hutton, J. P. Mills, G. D. Walker, C. R. Passe, and J. H. Grace uh, carried out ex explorations in this area. Not many sites were, not none of the sites were excavated by these uh, surveyors. Whereas excavated sites uh, are very few uh, compared to those which are known from surface collections. The excavated sites comprise Daujali heading in uh, Salvaigiri in the Garo Hills of North Kachar Hills of Assam and Sarutaru and Markdola on the Shillong Plateau. Artifact type and the corded pottery find parallels with similar finds from Eastern and Southeastern Asia like the Neolithic cultures of Yangshao and Yangshanoid of China and Huibinian of Thailand. But chronological gap prevent from linkage between uh, East Asian Neolithic and the Northeast Indian Assam Neolithic has, uh, has revealed six phases of development defined by the raw materials and stone tool types. Stone tools include blade tools and microliths including pottery. And typical of uh, the stone axes found in the Neolithic context of Assam is the shouldered silt. They are most common type of uh, stone axes that are known from this region. Such artifacts are also known from uh, eastern and southern India, but in terms of their presence uh, and percentage, it is very small, whereas here they are very frequent. And these shouldered axes are normally very common in Southeast Asia around the time period of 3500 BC or so. The Neolithic way of life in this region reveals a combination of hunting and foraging activity along with rice agriculture and veggie culture using slash and burn technology. These northeastern humid land landforms are also known as, uh, uh, as part of the primary area of rice cultivation. In this region, uh, the presence of wild rice has already been documented by geophytologists. Further east of the northeastern part of the Indian subcontinent, we enter into the plains of uh, the Ganga. In this region, Neolithic research is of recent past. Whereas the Neolithic archaeology in other areas have a longer research history. In this region, uh, the emphasis on the identifying Neolithic culture uh, it dates back to the 1980s until the joint expedition carried out by G. R. Sharma. And among the many sites known from the uh, Middle Ganga Valley and Northern Vindhyas, the sites of Chopanimando, Koldiva, Mahagara uh, are at the center of discussion to, to be able to reconstruct the manner in which the transition from hunting gathering to agricultural way of, took, way of life took place. Most of the Neolithic sites that are known in, from this region are juxtaposed with the late uh, hunter gatherer settlements as well. In the Ganga and Vindhyan region, north, which, which, which is included in the, in the geographical area designated North Central India, there is evidence of transition from Epipaleolithic to Advanced Mesolithic to Proto-Neolithic to Neolithic. This is one of the few areas where this transition can be delineated, unlike in other areas of the subcontinent. Excavated sites include Koldiva, Mahagara, Pacho, Indari and Chopani Mando. Explorations in the valleys of Bailan, Adwa, Son, Rihand, Ganga, Lapari and Pisuni rivers and also in Banda, Hamirpur, Jansi, Lalitpur and Chot 
Chhatrapati Shahu Ji Maharaj Nagar of Bundelkhand region have uh, uh, given good evidence of the presence of suitable raw materials for manufacturing polished stone axes. In addition to that, uh, adequate information on the Neolithic uh, way of life is also obtained from excavations. Koldiva happens to be one of the earliest sites yielding the evidence for our rice cultivation. In recent years, a couple of more sites have also, give, have also given evidence for cultivation of rice dating back to 6th millennium BC. In the excavations, a threefold cultural sequence with Neolithic, Chalcolithic and Iron Age have been uh, revealed uh, at, at, all, at all major uh, sites mentioned above. The Neolithic levels have yielded cells, microliths and handmade cord impressed, rusticated and burnished wares. Here is the example of cord impressed pottery with rice impressions from the site of Koldiva. Koldiva uh, initial radiocarbon dating gave an age of 8000 to 6000 BP. But later revisions have also suggested that the earliest rice cultivated in this area need, is not necessarily as old as 8000 years ago but likely around 5000 years ago. The site is, has revealed the presence of circular huts, domestication of cattle, cultivation of rice, presence of ground stone axes and edges and various types of pottery. The dates that are available uh, are in the range of uh, 5000 BCE to uh, 2000 BCE. Chopani Mandu is another site which was subject to uh, excavation by the Allahabad uh, Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture. It is one of the cluster of sites seen along the Balan Valley. Here again, the transition from Epipaleolithic to Mesolithic to Proto-Neolithic to Neolithic has been delineated based on the excavations at the site. And the chronology of the site goes back to 19,000 years ago to 9,000 BP. These transitions occurred uh, during this time period up to Proto-Neolithic. Subsequently, Neolithic culture, um, Neolithic life phase appear to have been well established in this region. At Chopani Mando period 3, Proto-Neolithic period is characterized by circular huts, grinding stones, ring stones, fragile cord marked pottery, stone and bone ornaments, wild rice, wild cattle and antelope. And the dates for this time period is about 3300 BC to 3100 BC. At Mahagara in the in the Balan Valley, nearly 20 heights of wattle and daub, 20 huts of wattle and daub were uh, exposed during the course of excavation. Neolithic blades and microliths, pottery, querns, mullers, sling balls, cells, bone harrows, arrowheads, terracotta beads, and animal bones have been recovered from uh, Mahagara Neolithic levels. Irregular rectangular cattle pens were fenced by at least 20 post holes with three openings with different aged cattle, um, cattle, sheep, goat, horse, deer hoof impressions of around 40 to 60 animals have been found in this, uh, in this enclosed area uh, identified as a cattle pen. Hunting of wild boar, deer, antelope, bear and bird is also evidenced by the presence of uh, uh, animal remains of the uh, animal bones of these animals. Wild rice was cultivated, ground stone tools were very common, microliths and handmade pottery is also typical of the Mahagara Neolithic. The site of Mahagara is lo located on the opposite banks of the river uh, where Koldiva is located. It is the cultural remains are contemporary with the Koldiva and uh, uh, similar features found at Koldiva are also repeated uh, at the site of Mahagara. The site also, the slide also shows uh, the, the excavated area and uh, the activity areas identified by the excavators. Further south, southeast of uh, uh, the Middle Ganga Valley and uh, the Son Belen uh, Valleys in the eastern Vindhyas, we enter into the region uh, known as Kaimur Hills. Explorations during 1985-87, Neolithic and Neolithic Chalcolithic, Chalcolithic sites have been discovered. Senuar is one among the many sites known from this area. The site is situated on the right, right bank of the river 
Kudra and was excavated for two field seasons. Neolithic culture has sub-periods 1A and 1B. Comparable to those pottery types known from the Ganga Valley, even here, carved impressed pottery, rusticated ware and burnished red and grey wares have also been recovered from the Neolithic levels. Stone tools included microlithic bladelets, blades, flakes of chert, chalcedony and quartzite, triangular cells of basalt, bezels, saddle, saddle querns, rubbing stones and sling walls are also common. Carbonized grains from this particular site indicate cultivation of two crops a year, rice and barley, field pea and lentils, reed huts with well rammed floors. Chronology of later half of the 3rd millennium BC is ascribed to the Neolithic period here in sub-period 1a. Sub-period 1b uh, is characterized by the presence of copper from Nyugaring Rakha mines, fish hooks, wire and needles. Post-firing ochre colored paintings are present on the burnished greyware vessels. Lower levels, are, um, lo lower levels have yielded uh, C14 dates of one, 1770 and 1400 BCE. In the middle Ganga valley of Uttar Pradesh, there are a large number of sites including Juusi, Hetapatti, Bunadhi, Vaina, Shahgura, Imlidi, Khurd, Lahurudeva um, and some of these sites are located on the Oxbow lakes as well as on banks of rivers. These sites have given evidence of circular or oval wattle and daub huts with hearths and pit silos. Cereals and pulses of rice, barley, wheat, field pea, lentin, green gram, domesticated cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat and pigs are included in the subsistence economy, some being domesticated and some of them being hunted. Handmade and slow wheel turned pottery with redware, lustrous redware, corded ware, burnished ware and types of bowls, vases, basins, miniature jars, spouted vessels, painted pottery from Lavarodeva are, are characteristic of the Neolithic in this region. Lithic tools include uh, microliths made from cryptocrystalline silica such as chalcedony and jasper, bladelets and scrapers made from chert and other similar types of rocks. In the context of early rice cultivation, the site of Lahurudeva occupies a significant uh, place in the reconstruction of agricultural history of the Indian subcontinent. The site was excavated for three seasons by the Directorate of Archaeology and Museums, Government of Uttar Pradesh. Early Neolithic uh, habitation has been subdivided into uh, period 1, sub-periods 1 and 2, etc. The period 1 represents the early food producing era dating back to 6300 BC. Lahuradeva period 1a has yielded carbonized wild rice and domestic rice as well. In the plant remains and matrix of the pot, pot sheds like in the context of Koldiva. AMS date for the husk of a domesticated rice grain is calibrated age of 6360 BC. This happens to be the oldest evidence of rice cultivated rice in the context of Neolithic Indian subcontinent. Charcoal samples have been collected from the lower levels and they also give similar ages going back to 5300 BCE. Subperiod 1b is dated to 3000 to 2000 BCE. Barley and Dishan stand along with earlier cultural materials continue here. Pedestal, bowl and spouted vessel, a few examples of painting on pot sheds, steatite beads, lithic artifacts and bone artifacts are significant finds in the context of uh, this particular time period. Charcoal has been dated to about 2700 BCE. Lahuradeva period 1b, copper, copper arrow point, rods, gorg and fish hook have also been found. Further southeast of this region, we enter into the Chota Nagpur Plateau. Several sites have yielded ground stone tools including rounded butt cells similar to the eastern Himalayan region and shouldered cells similar to those found in Assam. Some sites have handmade pottery, charred rice at couple of sites like Buridi along with iron, iron tools have also been discovered here. In the region of modern Bihar, Neolithic sites have been found in three geomorphic contexts. 
uh, along the rivers in the foothills and hilly regions of South Bihar. There are several sites representing uh, Neolithic way of life in these regions as well. Some of the well-known sites include Senuar, Sasaram in, and uh, also the site of Chirand uh, in this region where excavations have been carried out uh, by the Department of Archaeology of the state of Bihar. The site of Chirand was excavated during 1963-1970 and during the course of 1969-70. Two, tr two trenches were excavated which exposed the presence of pre-metal Neolithic culture complex. One of the trenches has Neolithic layers uh, between layer 12 and 18. Hunting, fishing, rudimentary cultivation are observed in the context of evidence such as presence of wild animals and uh, uh, presence of fish bones and also presence of uh, grains of rice, wheat, barley, lentils, etc. Domestication is indicated by the presence of humped cattle, Indian buffalo, sheep, goat and pig. Triangular stone axes with the rounded butt and convex cutting edge, uh, pezzles, querns, hammers and rectangular milling stones which are common uh, varieties of uh, food processing implements have also been uh, found in the context of Neolithic uh, period here at Chirand. Circular houses of reed and mud indicated by post holes. Handmade vessels comprising bowls and spoons, ladle and miniature pots of black and red ware decorated with applique design, incise design and post firing, scratching and post firing ochre painting is observed. The available radiocarbon dates place the Neolithic to the early part of the second millennium BC from 1750 to 1270 BCE. Other site associated with Chirand is Manji, Chechar, Sonpur and Burudi. In Bengal, polished stone axes have been found at sites like Dungarbusti, Sindibong, Bhagiridibi, Purulia, Susinia hills and other such places. In the Ajay valley, uh, sites of Burdwan and uh, in Birbam and Bhagirathi river valleys, triangular ground stone axes, ring stones, shoulder shells have been found. The site of Bharbur was excavated in the year 1971-72. Here, Neolithic Chalcolithic cultural levels have been ide identified. It is suggested that in Bengal, the presence of early phase of Neolithic is yet not very well documented. The pottery included both plain and painted pottery, bone tools, Neolithic shells, microliths, semi-precious semi stone beads, reed and bamboo houses were also common. In Odisha, Kuchai is one of the most important sites that has been excavated from this region. This site was excavated by B.K. Thapar. Uh, in the upper clay deposits, uh, ranging in thickness from 40 to 45 centimeters, polished triangular axes with rounded butt, faceted hose, chisels, mace heads, pounders and grinding stones have been recovered. Coarse grit tempered redware bowls and the kunda sometimes slipped and occasionally bearing incised or fingertip decorations are common. So based on th this account, it is now possible to trace the emergence of early food producing era or the Neolithic in terms of three distinctive geographical areas in the Indian subcontinent. The northwestern region including Afghanistan, Baluchistan and the Indus Valley, we have the earliest evidence of the Neolithic culture going back to the 9th millennium BCE, where we have evidence of cultivation of wheat, barley, domestication of sheep, goat and cattle. Key sites include Garimar, Gari Asp, Darai Khur and Mehargar. Mehargar populations indicate uh, based on dental morphology and genetic trait analysis a distinctively Asian gene pool. Mongoloid dental traits linked with Sunda Daunt populations rather than to Natufians of the Near East. In central Ganga and Vindian region, the Neolithic based on rice cultivation and domestication of cattle as well as domestication of barley as revealed by the sites of Lahura Deva, Koldeva and Mahagara range in time from 6500 BCE to 2000 BCE. Further south in the peninsular India, we have the Neolithic being around 3000 BCE and this, uh, the details regarding the southern Neolithic is being presented 
in the next uh, module. For more detailed and uh, clear uh, account of the Neolithic culture of Northwestern India and uh, uh, Northern India including the Vindhyas and the Ganga Plains as well as Northeastern India including the humid landforms of Assam and uh, Northeastern Hills and Eastern India including Bihar and Varissa, please go through the e-text. Thank you.